Well, the Reserve Bank and the Banking Association of South Africa have today released the results of a study into the role of the prime rate and the repo rate in the local banking system. This follows concern last year that banks were charging customers interest rates that were too high and that there was no reason to maintain the 350 basis point gap between the prime rate and the repo rate. Joining me to take us through the findings is Mark Britz. He's General Manager of Banking and Financial Services at the Banking Association. Mark, thanks for coming in this afternoon. Thank you. And Mark, there's been a lot of confusion about the, the, the prime rate and the repo rate and what their roles are. But really, the prime rate is just a benchmark and ba banks seldom charge their customers exactly the prime rate. It really depends on risk, doesn't it? That's correct. I mean, the, the old days we had a prime lending rate, which was the rate at which people were lent money. Today, the prime rate is a reference rate. So what generally happens is the bank will establish the rate first, and then once that rate has been established for future repricing, we'll link it to the prime rate to make it easier for both the consumer and the bank. Take us back a step, perhaps. What was the cause for the study? Why did we need it? Well, originally, uh, Mr. Mbaweni, the governor of the Reserve Bank at that stage, uh, requested that we have a look at the mechanics of the repo rate and the link to the prime rate to see if there was any undue effects there that perhaps the banks were making a profit of 350 basis points implied in this particular repo rate arrangement. And are they making a profit? What Absolutely. was the findings? No, <laughs> Absolutely not. They are making profits though. They are making profits, hopefully. Um, but the 350 basis points is really just a link between the repo rate and the reference rate. Banks' profits are made from a number of avenues. So we don't just get net interest margin. There's also fee income and so forth. So to use that as a proxy, is just it, it's not a very good proxy. One should use return on equity or something. There also had been uh, accusations that banks were being anti-competitive or uncompetitive rather by all having prime rate at the same level, um, which is three, 350 basis points above the repo rate. C can you explain why they're not being anti-competitive with that? Well, the repo rate is not the driving rate of setting interest rates for banks' loans. So what does happen is the, the, the prime rate actually acts as a benchmark so that the public can compare rates between two different banking organizations for the products that they're taking. So it actually aids transparency to have a prime rate predominantly in the marketplace so that people can see it and compare their bank pricing. For us as banks, the repo rate does influence the yield curve. So it does start at the bottom end of the yield curve and influences right the way through to longer dated investments. But the actual pricing itself, the banks will look at cost of funding, they will look at the risk profile of the individual customer, and also they will concentrate on their risk appetite as to what they want to do uh, in the marketplace. If we didn't have this link between the prime rate and the repo rate, would it take away the effectiveness of the Reserve Bank in steering short-term interest rates? No, I don't believe it will. Uh, the repo rate will influence the interest rates across the curve. What it does do is it makes it a very public and a very efficient mechanism of repricing loans. We have an agreement with our consumer that we will reprice according to that particular methodology of prime, and having the repo rate linked to prime immediately means that the transmission of monetary policy is affected. But apart from the repo, how else can the Reserve Bank influence interest rates? Does it have any other tools at its, at its disposal? Yes, it does. It can use open market operations, for example, and get into the markets and drain liquidity. We work on a, in a, in a system whereby the central bank drains liquidity from the, from, the, uh, from the depositor, from the bank's deposits, and we have to go to the central bank to borrow the marginal uh, deposits that we need and therefore it can come into the market it can shorten the amount of money that it supplies to us also it can do open market operations okay so the cost of funding not just in determined by the repo level there are other market forces at hand that are going to influence that cost of funding oh absolutely because you know for banks we have three levels of cost of funding we take rands from the south african market we also fund from international sources and then we have our capital base so all those three in the mix will come up with the cost of funding and that's the basis from which we start our lending decisions as to what the interest rate is going to be. Of course, we had these discussions last year and it was really at the height of the financial crisis when banks weren't lending, when there was no liquidity. Uh, still accusations that some banks aren't lending, that customers are finding it difficult to, to, to get loans. Getting easier though, but we're still not at normalized conditions, are we? No, and I think it will take some time. You know, there's the, the international community have reacted quite uh, strongly towards the, the banking crisis. And they are starting to implement new processes and procedures that we will end up having to follow, which will end up making lending a little bit more conservative in the short term. So I think you can see the, the, the market is beginning to pick up again. But yes, with the National Credit Act, with uh, changes to the international legislation, you will see a bit more of a conservative bias coming from the banks. So what was the conclusion of this report? Do we need changes to the system? Is the status quo going to be maintained for the time being? 
I think the conclusion is that the status quo will be retained. It works efficiently in South Africa. Everybody understands it. And hopefully that this document will dispel any of the myths that came out of the thinking that perhaps there was an unintended consequence thereof.